thanks a lot uh, for uh, for the kind words. Uh, thank you uh, a lot for uh, inviting uh, me, and also, of course, for uh, being here. We are very happy that we can continue with the tradition of uh, of having uh, this uh, annual dinner in in our premises. Also, I must say I'm a little bit. Uh, 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 not puzzled. I'm, I'm mightily pleased to learn that I'm working even when I do not notice it. So I'm happy to to hear that I was. Uh, how did you How did you put it? Uh, uh, helping you managing the event. No, 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 no organization. Oh, thanks, thanks. I, I can do it. I'm, I'm sure I did it some it's, but without noticing. Uh, so it's very nice. Uh, now uh, I have a pleasure to be a first speaker, which essentially means that uh, I can um, give uh, the, m the most boring uh, speech of the of the evening because uh, this is the time when your attention is not that much distracted, uh, and uh, others will have to have to I believe uh, work much harder to uh, to get your attention. So I decided to go for a traditional form that uh, we know from this uh, place and uh, simply spent few few words uh, on uh, on state of uh, of situation in Czech uh, economy so i will i will basically deal with two two topics uh, where are we and uh, what uh, we do expect uh, in future well we are essentially what we we know uh, we think we are in the around the bottom of the second part of w in terms of GDP development, as, uh, as seen on this picture. Uh, as we expected, this uh, second part is uh, uh, shallower than, uh, uh, than the first part, but uh, frankly, we did not expect it's going to be that long-lasting uh, second uh, V in W. And uh, the only thing that uh, seemed to be driving this economy uh, in uh, significant extent are net exports. This uh, country actually competes very nicely on, uh, in this tough global market. But the rest of it uh, is uh, essentially holding the GDP growth uh, down. Companies are becoming uh, more efficient in terms of assets, so they are definitely not building, uh, building fixed capital or inventories. So uh, government was uh, or is about to end its fiscal consolidation and households are skeptical. And that also means that uh, the output gap is still widening. Uh, the output gap uh, of uh, current situation starts uh, another point? Yes. We are here. Yeah, we, are, we are at the the border of shade, shaded area, and uh, it's going to to stay as such for a while, and we expect to be closing uh, next year. In terms of GDP, we are one of the, uh, I would say, we are the, uh, to put a positive spin in it. We are on a top of the bottom third of European economies in terms of GDP growth, <laughs> and. Uh, I believe uh, we are also, to put a real positive uh, shade in it, it's partially due to the fact that we are one of the first European economies that realize that it's uh, going to have to close the, the structural fiscal uh, deficit. And uh, we are one of the first that has done so. So there are countries which didn't have to engage in it. Uh, say like Austria, which didn't have to do too much of tough things because they were already there. There are countries who are just about to start and have not been that much pushed by markets. There are, of course, well-known examples of countries that uh, have been pushed heavily by the markets. And we are one of the countries which was not that much pushed uh, by the markets, but, uh, but is about to close. And uh, to give you an idea, maybe so you, will, you will get the idea how uh, how relatively fast and abrupt that this uh, consolidation that uh, is uh, at this moment we are in a situation in which uh, we are seeing essentially sub-zero, mild sub-zero decline and the budget deficit is going to be 
around or below 3%. And this is not uh, such, a, such a slight, uh, slight adjustment. This is quite, quite significant effort. And it's been, of course, it's been dragging the growth for, for quite a while. Now, as to, as to uh, other indicators, uh, industry is definitely not pleasing now. It's uh, in mild negative numbers, partially probably long term, longer term cycle, but partially also facing uh, the significant uh, demand problems. I will, I will dwell more on this uh, here on this chart. I believe this is, uh, this is quite an interesting chart. Uh, uh, this is the chart that gives you the idea what the firms uh, name as their main barrier of growth. So the firms have a chance to name one main barrier of growth. And this time I'll use uh, the second one, just to, not to favor. So this is the situation before crisis. Yeah? If you remember these uh, lovely, lovely ages, uh, to, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the less than fifth of the firm had any problems with demand. More, actually, they were looking for labor at that time. This, this is the peak of the cycle. Eh? I mean, like nobody, nobody has a demand problem. And by the way, uh, almost uh, more than one fourth of firms have no problems at all. And now the crisis stroke, and uh, more than two thirds of the firm simply faced only one thing, uh, demand problems. At the beginning of crisis, there were some problems with access to financial, uh, financial sources or loans. But uh, as a matter of fact, it was very, a very short-term phenomenon and uh, the banking sector here definitely didn't, uh, didn't play any, any kind of significant role in constraining the firms as witnessed by uh, rather narrow blue, uh, blue area there. And now we are in a situation where in which almost the same percentage of firms, but uh, keep in mind this is not weighted uh, figure, but the same amount, physical amount of firm is facing uh, demand problems. Nobody has a real problem with labor. And the, the good news is that quite a few firms, almost one-fifth, are not facing problems at all. So we are in some sense in a situation that resembles uh, the beginning of the crisis, but has two, two important phenomena differences. So the first one is that uh, uh, the share of firms that do not feel any problems is, uh, is higher. And the second one that uh, there are no sort of supply problems, including supply of financial resources. Now, uh, why this is so? Of course, uh, we are exporters and uh, the global environment has uh, turned down. This is uh, the, the chart that uh, shows uh, our uh, industrial output and German industrial output. The first thing uh, interesting for the, econ for the economist, in, a, in a quite a few periods, the chart looks like we are driving Germany. <laughs> you see, the, the red line goes down sooner than the blue line and then the red line goes up and the blue line follows so so you see we are driving German industrial output yeah? it's <laughs> as, as always yeah <laughs> hopefully we are not going to continue at present yeah that's the second notion uh, the third one is uh, well, all this is about a different, uh, different ordering uh, maturity period, I'm afraid. Yeah. So we are not really driving Germany. But I wonder what, uh, what's happening here, I must say. That's uh, something that's not, uh, not too pleasant to complain about. All right, I will, I will uh, return back to the left. All right, and uh, as I always say, our uh, lovely conservative uh, population reacts on the situation in a typical way, cuts its spending and cuts its uh, purchases. Yeah. And, uh, and that's uh, the positive uh, part of the picture is that despite uh, everything we cannot do, and I, I don't think we are alone in this, but uh, the consumer sentiment that's very low I mean, like in, in historical terms starts uh, improving. And uh, 
we believe that uh, access to financial resources is uh, playing part of the role. I'm, I'm not saying everything is, is driven by this. I, I'm not that naive. But simple, uh, simply the fact that uh, uh, the loans are probably not going to be cheaper than uh, uh, now at the times when the interest policy interest rate is at zero is, uh, might play a role. And uh, the rest of the sentiments, the, the firms are actually not, uh, not that pessimistic. And uh, let me also to outsiders uh, or, or first comers uh, or first uh, people who are first exposed to this sort of explanation again stress that despite the fact the statistical office uh, benchmarks the question or try to benchmark the question in a way that uh, the average is at 100%. If you would take a look on all sort of sentiments in Czech Republic, you would find that the long-term average is below 100%. And those of you who know what is the uh, most often Czech answer to how are you, uh, greeting, uh, understand why it is so. It's a cultural thing for outsiders. Yeah, it's a cultural thing. It's a polite way of putting it. I, I have already said that we are behind the fiscal consolidation, and you can see it here. This is the uh, the budget development year per year. So uh, the blue line is 2010 when we uh, sort of freely started in a significant manner. Then black 2011, 2012. Now in 2013, that's too much to draw from the from the January number, but I, I don't think it will end up worse. Yeah. So so we are sort of behind this uh, exercise that was very biting the economy and consumer sentiment, and that's also of course part of the why we are uh, relatively more optimistic for the future. And this is the source of optimism. We, we, we've been never doing so well on our world markets in terms of result of our foreign trade. And that's, uh, that's very significant. That's, uh, that's quite an improvement. I mean, like if you take a look uh, year on year in 2008, we, had, we didn't have any real problems with, uh, with foreign trade. But now we are generating significantly more from it. And, uh, and that's a positive sign. We've been essentially improving all years, but, but this drop of yellow line beho below the green line in the second half of the year is, uh, as I like to stress, the first uh, general industrial pro policy in this country that produced visible macro outcome. And this is the photovoltaic program. And these are the imports yeah, be before the deadline for the better treatment of photovoltaic. Yeah, so, so the first time we generated uh, significant visible macroeconomic results are fortunately with relatively disastrous uh, consequences for, uh, for the budget and uh, consumers of uh, electric energy. And that's just uh, repeating what I've already said in, uh, in uh, uh, Euronian data. All right, in, in terms of uh, Forex, uh, we've been we are hearing a lot of uh, comments on whether we can influence the forex or not. So let me just note that this deviation from the trend is uh, getting relatively unusual in last years. Yeah. And uh, you can judge yourself whether this is also due to what we communicate to the markets or not. In terms of inflation, no, no problems on this front. That's why we, we started talking about uh, exchange rate as a possible future tool once we reach the uh, zero, uh, zero limit on, uh, on uh, interest rates. And that's just uh, restressing the, the things. Uh, the only inflation pressures you hear here in last uh, uh, year or last um, 12 months are uh, uh, yellow lines, which are uh, taxes, uh, uh, food prices on a green uh, terms, which are very difficult to be influenced by monetary policy as they still depend on harvest. And the next harvest is typically the average one, or this is the best forecast. And the uh, blue lines, which are administrative prices, essentially reflecting commodity price, uh, energy price pushes from outside mainly. I already mentioned that our rates are rather low in historical standards. Uh, we are not going to, to, to go lower, I must say. I, I see that uh, you know, one of uh, the speakers that will follow me is going to be uh, from uh, Scandinavia, so there are experiences with negative interest rates.
but uh, but we are not going to go there. Frankly, because we could go there in in, in practical terms, slightly ten or twenty basis points below, but we would have to communicate a lot with our uh, friendly ministries uh, why the debtors to the state are getting subsidy from the state for for their achievement. And we found that communication-wise, that's not necessary. We could, of course, communicate with them that we warned them uh, already two or three years ago that this may arrive, and they should have changed their laws and sub-laws. But frankly, I, I don't find this communication exercise worth the merit. Uh, we, we would rather start communicating what we plan to do. All right, so uh, where are we? We are in the bottom of recession. We think uh, that the fundamentals of this economy are actually quite uh, quite okay in terms of financial sector having no problems in terms of uh, exporters and industrial firms which are still driving this economy and let me also note we are one of the few if not only European country that increased in last decade the weight of uh, industry on its GDP I think probably Slovakia might be another one thing and uh, that shows that we can uh, build on it. And uh, we just need to do what, whatever, we, uh, whatever is necessary. So we, we will continue with very easy monetary policy. We are not going to engage in any QE exercise simply because in this over-liquid financial sector it, uh, it's not worth uh, the effort. And if necessary, we are going to work with other tools, and to which I'm going to go in the second part of what I'm going to talk about. So I said already that I think we are bottoming out. We also think the Europe, not all European countries, not all headlines, but we think the Europe is uh, going to be bottoming out. And that's because uh, some countries like us uh, are about to finish their fiscal consolidation. Those are some of the driving uh, economies. Some countries do not need any fiscal consolidation and start realizing this. And uh, quite frankly, we do not trade that much with the others. In terms of uh, inflation, we do not expect that Europe will be disturbed by its inflation, so we do not expect it uh, as well. And that's reflected on the fact that if Euro Euribor is going to increase, it's going to be increasing mildly. In terms of exchange rate, I'm not going to comment. Commodities are not going to be too much of a concern. Let me just say that all these uh, assumptions are purchased. We simply purchase uh, uh, consensus for the cost and built on it. Time to time we deviate or do alternative scenario. I remember we did it two years ago when simply the average consensus forecast on uh, uh, exchange rate, inflation, and uh, interest rate were obviously non-consistent. So we, we essentially did our own consistent simulation, what, what all this should mean. But, uh, but normally we do not uh, deviate and we do not intend to have a, and that's probably unfortunate for you, but we do not intend to, to beat uh, IMF or OECD or major, uh, major banks in terms of having better forecasters here in this house. I pity you, it's, it's a pity, but if you, if you want to do this, you, you must move. Yeah. All right, in terms of uh, our expectation of what's going to drive the growth, uh, exports are going to stay, but we expect a pickup of uh, household consumption, as some households will simply rely, they have, very, they have more stable cash, future cash flows uh, than they were it, and uh, they will also realize that the market is offering them opportunities in terms of uh, uh, real estate or, or a similar uh, market and as well they will realize that with our uh, future uh, policies uh, it's a little bit less likely that uh, or unlikely uh, that uh, the big ticket items price is going to go down as they used to with cars and, and other big, big, big ticket items in past. And that uh, leads our uh, inflation forecast, which is after all what we do care about, and it's uh, below the target, below the inflation target. And even more important monetary policy relevant inflation that takes out of inflation what we cannot, I'm not saying uh, what we cannot influence, but what we cannot equalize with uh, monetary policy uh, is uh, even, uh, even uh, slightly more below. 
Our interest rate forecast uh, is not below zero, but this is three months pre-board. We are, as you are most likely aware, of, uh, we are working with two weeks, uh, two weeks uh, interest rates, and the spread is around 50 percent, relatively persistent, and that uh, means that we may need negative interest rates that be precluded in the second half of the year. Or to put it in a, in a more clear wording, this forecast essentially assumes that we will relax the monetary policy with uh, exchange rate in the second half of this year. So this is our best uh, picture of future. But before we get there, we are going to produce a few more pictures and the situation is go going to be changing. So we will see what's going to happen. Definitely, uh, exchange rate forecast assumes, assumes negative interest rates. So if this forecast is going to be happening reality, this exchange rate is not uh, valid, essentially. The exchange rate is going to be weaker. As to risks, well, we still cannot uh, ignore the uh, debt crisis in Euro era. Uh, in terms of domestic risks, we are still in the household consumption and saving behavior. The risks are also, um, I must mention, uh, a little bit increased by the fact that we are not sure what to make up from the latest bunch of uh, statistical data on GDP and uh, they are not that consistent with uh, retail sales and sort of more hard data, so we, we expect some, uh, some changes in them. Uh, scale and impact of fiscal consolidation seem to be mm, sort of getting a slightly lower below uh, in, in importance because uh, it seems to me that uh, the consensus is that this country, given the price it pays on its debt and given how it's viewed outside, simply doesn't uh, doesn't really need a, another big fiscal exercise at all. And, uh, and I believe that's quite right. Uh, the last uh, spectral slide uh, gives you a bunch of, uh, of uh, simply uh, forecast numbers, uh, starting with GDP, essentially sub-zero sub -zero uh, situation to uh, this year. and. Uh, relatively reasonable growth next year, which should be accelerating, and then restress is what I have already said in, uh, in data form. So thank you. Um, I believe uh, most of you have seen some of my presentations, so know that I like to end with Emir Sini and pictures of myself in, in all edges of the, of the hall. And, uh, and, uh, but please keep in mind two things. First, there is a persistent error in my last slide that uh, gives you phone number for Bratislava instead for Prague. <laughs> and, uh, and we are changing it in many presentations, but in others it simply persists. So please do 420 if you really want to call me, which I hope you won't. And uh, the second one is if you have any questions after I I'm going to leave, which is most likely going to be around 9. Uh, please send me an email. Yeah, that's, that's a good way of doing it. I can pass your uh, question somewhere else and make somebody answering it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. If you have any questions now, please go for it.